Good morning. So I'm Daisy with Daisy Made Up and I'm super excited here on my channel. If you've never been here before, welcome here. And so if you've never been here and go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and turn on the little notification bell above. And the reason I really mention that is because if you're gonna come tomorrow and you're gonna try to watch the video and find it again, it's sometimes hard when I'm live because the links don't show up all the time when you're searching somebody. But if you hit the little bell, and you go into YouTube on the top little part, it'll tell you who's live. And so it's usually easier to do that. So I'm excited to be here this morning. Yesterday, this week, we're talking about being prepared. And I'm going to talk about today about, you know, you know, when we're dealing with being prepared or we think what to do when you're not prepared. Because sometimes um, we plan a destination or a journey. Have you ever got, gone somewhere like you either think you're going to go to Disneyland or you're going to go to, let's say, to the beach or you're going to go out for shopping just on an errand and you realize you forgot something or you didn't, you know, quite get what you needed to get. And so today I'm going to talk about that because um, that's kind of what happened to me yesterday. I was prepared to do this video and go live and so forth and think life just happens. Things come up and they're unexpected and it became a little hard for me. So um, I want to talk today about, you know, if you've ever gone to the beach and you've gone like last year went on vacation and you plan you packed all these things, you know, for the kids, you pack floaties, you, pla you pack sunblock, you pack a bunch of stuff in hope that, you know, you have it all. Um, and so yesterday my son um, was going to go camping and he did go camping. And so we had been talking about, you know, what we needed to get for his bag or what he needed to pack and what was expected for him to bring. He had a list of, of what was on there. And so we tried to pack everything on his list. And then um, my other son was going to have a presentation and I had been working on him, you know, practicing his little presentation. And then he was kind of, he's so shy that he didn't really want a lot of props. I wanted him to really, um, he picked the, the snowflake man. He was going to do his little speech on him and pretend, you know, that he was saying his little biography on himself and that he was a snowflake man. But he didn't really want too many, you know, props. And so he was having a hard time with, you know, picking what to wear. And so pick something very simple. He just goes, I just want a beanie. So we found one that looked like he was in the snow and that's pretty much what he wore. But it was just, it was an exciting day, you know, exciting because in the simple fact that my oldest son, I never let him go anywhere without me. He's always with me and my husband, you know, for the most part, I'll let him go to my mom's for a day or two. And in between the days that he's there, we go look for him. So we'll go stop by and say, hey Jay, how are you doing? Or what are you doing? Or what can we do for you? Or whatever the situation is and so um yesterday i had you know i had started working like i said about three weeks ago and it's been good to work you know because my kids are in school for the most part during the day and we are busy with church and so i was like okay well i it would be good to work so i've been working and um my job's been pretty flexible about letting me you know move things around if i need to because I had a, had a busy month. But this week, it sounds super loud here. I'm gonna try to get to the park. Before I was walking to the park, I mean, driving to the park in the morning, I was like, you know what? I'll just make it part of my walk. So then I walk more distance because I can't just stop when I'm done off the phone walking. I have to walk back home. So that's why I'm walking and then there's more noise. I'm sorry about that. But um, anyways, so yesterday, as I looked at my schedule last week, and realized I had orientation for work and um, it was an optional. That orientation is only done every so often, every couple months or so forth. And I couldn't reschedule. So I was okay. I was prepared that I wasn't going to be able to go take my son, drop him off at school on the bus. And then it was heartbreaking because I wasn't going to be able to, you know, go see Samson's presentation. And to me, that was, it was hard. It was hard to, to think of that when I had seen that, but I was like, okay, well, my husband said he'll go, he'll go for me, you know. And normally we both go anyway. There's a lot of times that I go by myself, my husband kind of works as well. But usually I'm the one that's always there. And I don't know if as a mom you feel that way, they're usually the consistent one that's always there for your kids. My husband loves my boys and stuff, but for the most part, if he has to work and he can't change his schedule, I always go. And so when I got my boys up in the morning, I got them dressed. I was having a, I was packing the stuff in the morning and I was having a, I was having a really hard morning. I was having a super hard morning just in the simple fact that I was thinking, okay, that it was like hitting me. 
my son's gonna be gone for a couple days, and it was hitting me that that um, I wasn't gonna be able to see my my other son. He was totally okay with it. He was he was like, "It's okay, mom. Don't worry. Dad's going. I'll be fine. I'm gonna do good. I know it." And he was so positive, and and you know, thank God that he gave him both of them the strength that they weren't upset that you know I wasn't gonna go say hi bye to them on the bus. One of them, and the other one that was gonna be there with him. So I was super excited about that, but. I just, I was having like an emotional breakdown where I was like crying and I was upset and I was just frustrated because as a mom, like those are milestone moments in their lives that I can't get back. And I just felt like, I can't believe I'm not going to be there. And that was one of the reasons before that I had stopped working and um, talking about being prepared. I felt prepared in the physical aspect that I got my kids what they needed. We had prepared, you know, for the speech. We had prepared for his trip. We had gone to the store, got what he needed. But I wasn't emotionally prepared to deal with the nonsense of how I was going to feel, of what my emotions were going to go through, as I was felt that I couldn't be there for them. And it, you know, brought back. And I think it stirred up so much in me so much memories of the last couple times that I worked. You know, when I worked with, with Avon, um, my job had a lot more flexibility. But there was times that I was gone, and it made it hard. My son um, told me, my youngest, when I stopped working with Avon, he's like, Mom, you're not going to be gone on long trips anymore, are you? And I was like, no, honey, I'm not, because I'd be gone for a week at a time sometimes. I think when the first year I worked, when I worked for Avon, um, I think I had like three, three big trips where I was gone for like three to four days, almost a week, each time I was gone. And it was, it was a toll on my kids. It was a great job and great experience, but it was a toll on my family because they used to me always being around. So as I was going through all that and you know, emotions were being stirred, but before Avon, my other job, when I worked in the makeup industry and I was gone, I was gone all the time, not long days, I'd come back daily, but just gone more on a daily basic basis um, most of the day. Gone most nights, most evenings and most weekends. You feel great, you're, you're ready, you're doing what you need to do. And then for one reason or another, you figure out you get to where you're going and you're not prepared. You, got, you went to a trip and you prepared all these things and you weren't prepared, like let's say you go to the beach, you were prepared that it was going to be cold, that it wasn't going to be sunny, that it was going to be, it's happened to me before. We've gone to Pismo, we've gone to Morro Bay, that we prepare, you prepare like summer clothes, you prepare to have a great time and then you get there and you realize how unprepared you are. And so um, you, you don't prepare for how unprepared you will be. I'm going to share this video because nobody is on right now and see if I can get any more people to join us. Never try to share when we're on here. So I just want to encourage you, if right now you're on, to share. So, um, so you can see that it was a hard day for me. It was a hard moment. It was a hard situation, how I felt yesterday, dealing with, um, if you're a mom, then you can completely understand. Um, if you're not a mom, it might be kind of hard. That might not sound like a reasonable thing, why I was so upset or whatever. But I want to encourage you that whatever you're going through, if you feel that you, you know, you're prepared for something, that, and it's not turned out to be what you wanted it to be. I'm going through. Um, just be encouraged. Be encouraged that you know that God has a plan for you. Like I said, I prepared yesterday for all those things, and they didn't go through like what I thought. It wasn't exactly what I thought it'd be. Um, I got to look at the playback on my son's video. It was amazing. It was so beautiful. Um, the camera was kind of far, but he was so happy. And then they sang to. They sang the song I'm "Proud to Be an American," and I felt I felt even more robbed that I knew it wasn't just the. Um, little speech that he gave then I felt that he sang a song but it's okay my other son I guess what was the hardest thing with my older son being gone and I don't know is that they weren't allowed to take phones they weren't allowed to take any form of communication so I don't know how he's doing and that like I said that's hard for me and it comes to the issue where you know I have to trust God and I have to put into practice what I preach and I have to trust God that he is going to be okay and I know he's okay it's just like I said I know it's just a more of an emotional thing for me than it really is anything dangerous happening because I know Jesus is protecting my child. So today we talk about what to do when we're not prepared. And sometimes the biggest issue is that we feel completely prepared. 
you like you got the you bought your plane ticket you're gonna go to hawaii you're gonna go to visit a family member and you look at the temperature you look at where you're going you know you base your outfits on the season and you think you're totally prepared and then you get there and out of a blue moon they're having completely different weather whether it's always sunny they're getting a bunch of rain or when it's always raining they're getting a bunch of sun i remember so many times when um i would come home when i lived in seattle for a while in washington i'd come home and i live in california and i was thinking you know because it had been cold over there and rainy that i could kind of forget to adjust my wardrobe to the weather here and i'd come back here and it'd be like june or july and it's super hot here and I had brought long sleeve shirts and sweaters and so many things like that because I thought, well, it's gonna be a little cold because it's cold over here and windy and that was not the case. So as we're talking today, we're gonna to talk about David and the Bible and talk about, you know, how God had prepared him and what he did and sometimes, and how he dealt with not being prepared. And so if you look at 1 Samuel 17, 17, it says, now Jesse said to his son, David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. David was um, the youngest brother, you know, and, and his father was Jesse, and his brothers were off at war against the Philistines. And a lot was going on, and a lot of emotional things must have been going on for his father, because if you read the next verse, 18, his dad basically tells him, you know, take the, you know, go talk to, you know, the people around your brother, get to know, give me some news, because they're off to war. But I guess they weren't too far that David could still take that journey and get there. So it says that David prepared. He got the things his father gave him. He prepared and he went off to his journey. And he went, just like you and I prepared. Just like you and I can get things ready. What are you preparing for right now? What is it you're preparing for right now? Is it you're preparing you want to live a healthier lifestyle? Yesterday, I was kind of meal prepping, meal prepping my food and you know doing things like that because I've noticed that um, when I'm not as prepared that I feel like obviously I cheat more or I don't eat as good food because I'm busy doing other stuff I try to make better choices but sometimes they're not the best choices because what's around you is not good so I was preparing some food preparing some meals preparing to have different things in my home that I can snack on that would be a good snack but that I would actually like it and so David was preparing to go to take that journey and I don't know what you're preparing for right now are you are you expecting a child and you're preparing to have a beautiful baby are you expecting you know are you expecting you know for your marriage to change and you're preparing for you know for you know revival in your home and you're really praying what is you preparing for david was preparing to take to go see his brothers to get news for his father and so when david gets there he was to go find the commanders of his brother's troop and he was supposed to go see what's going on look at the news and see you know what condition they're in so he could take back news to his father he could let jesse know what's really going on hopefully put his mind at peace and let him know it's going to be okay but when you read the story and you realize as david was physically prepared for what he thought was his journey his mission which was to be a good son and to be you know give his dad good news he gets there and that's not what he sees he sees that the israelites are really in trouble Things are going on, the, you know, there's a Philistine every day marching out and telling them, this has been going on for 40 days, telling them, you know, who will come out and fight him and whoever fights him one-on-one will win and that the other people will be the other people's slaves, basically. And so when he gets there and he sees Goliath saying those things and shouting out those remarks, he's like, who does this man think he is? You know, and so he's saying all these things and then he's saying, and what reward is going to be given to the one that, that wins the battle? That beats him. And his brother hears the news, and his brother is so mad, he's indignant with anger of how, you know, who does David think he is? He always thinks, he's like, you probably just came to see us fight, you probably just want to see what a war looks like, you're not here to help anybody, why are you here? Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to do? And sometimes when we're places and you think you're so prepared, you're doing spiritual warfare for your family, you're prepared and you think, you know, I'm really going to go to warfare for my family, I'm really going to go to warfare, you know, for my home, and you're in the midst of what's going on. And then all of a sudden, it's not what you thought. You feel unprepared. You found out some bad news. Or, you know, you found out some family members are doing something that you didn't think. You know, so many times I hear parents, oh, they found out their children are doing drugs. Or something else is happening. And you feel unprepared to deal with what was going on. You were prepared to deal with the fact that they didn't want to go to church, that they were being rebellious, that they didn't want you around. But you weren't prepared to deal with all the other news you got. 
and you get there and you feel like you're in chaos. You feel unequipped, unprepared. And that's how, you know, David seeing there, being there, you know, it doesn't say he feels chaotic. It doesn't say he feels, it doesn't say anything. It just says he's just more surprised at God's people feel unprepared. But that's how the commanders felt. As they were there, they had put a, they had prepared for battle. All the warriors in the army of, of Israel were prepared. They had been strapped. They had armor on. But they were prepared for battle. But they weren't prepared to deal with Goliath. They weren't prepared to deal with a man who was a huge giant and all these things. And they were having a hard time. They felt chaotic. And that's how I felt yesterday, like I said, dealing with the fact that I couldn't be at my son's presentation dealing with the fact that, you know, my other son was leaving and that I just felt like, why God, why can't I go, you know, out of all times for me not to have work, now I'm going to miss something that I really wanted to be part of. And I'm going to let this truck go. Sometimes that's how we, we will feel. You'll feel like you, you prepared. You prepared so hard for the occasion. You prepared to, you know, to, um, like I said, to really lose the weight. You prepared for that. And then something happens and you realize you're not losing the weight and you're diagnosed with thyroid, you have high blood pressure, you whatever it is, and you feel incapable of dealing with it. We see he was met with fear and chaos. And in our lives, that is, that is very normal. It says oh, people are always coming in out of a tragedy, and we're going into tragedy, or we're in the middle of a tragedy. And tragedies don't have to be, like I said, to everybody, a tragedy might be something different. Yesterday to me, that felt like a tragedy, that I couldn't be there for my kids, that I couldn't be the mom I wanted to be for them. Whatever you're going through in your life, do you feel that we're constantly going through things? And it says, it says in 1 Samuel 17, 24, that's when, that's when he started to hear about Goliath. And that's when, the, you know, if you read the story, it's in 1 Samuel 17, it starts to really develop the story of Goliath and, you know, the story of David. And we've read so much about it. We've seen articles, we've seen pictures, and it is a big story. But like I said, David, first of all, got prepared, so he thought, and then realized that that was not the course of action that God had for him. That was not the path, the journey that God had had for him. You might have gotten prepared. And like I said, we talked about, you know, not trying to focus on buying the best sneakers. If you want to buy those things and you need them, that's great. But let that not be the only way you get prepared. But if you went to the store, you got your gym membership and you did all those things and now you decided I'm prepared, then to only realize you can't work out in the gym because maybe you can't do certain exercises and it's just, you know, you don't have time for it. So what do you do? So as he was met with fear and chaos, he had a choice. He had a choice. Do I run back? Do I give up? You know, because his brother was telling him he should leave and you know, not be, um, not do what God has called him to do. He, his brother was saying, what are you doing here? You're here to show off. People might be telling you that. What are you doing? What is it you're going on in your life that, you know, why do you feel so prepared to go do something, you know, that you're not prepared to do? But who are you? You know, the first year that we became, um, we took ministry that was something we dealt with a lot it was people saying you know who do we think we were who were we and why were we any more special than anybody else you know there's people that had wanted to be ministers way longer than we had and we're not pastoring why were we any more special how could we do it and to be honest as a christian i had loved god and had prepared by praying and seeking god's word but i felt so unprepared and i felt so unequipped to meet that challenge and that task and you might feel that way and um as you see, as you start to read, First of Samuel 1738, we're gonna see right now, I'm waiting for the street to turn green because I don't wanna be walking in the middle of it and talking. But um, I don't know what you're dealing with right now, that where, what situation you're in, where you're finding yourself, and what, what limitations do you feel you have right now in your life? What journey, where is it that God has placed you that you thought you were so prepared to do a certain task? And it might have been a ministry. It might have been that, you know, you felt God called you to do certain ministry. And all of a sudden you get there and you're going to do what you thought you were, you know, contracted to do. Or maybe they called you and said, hey, sister, would you run the, the nursery? And then all of a sudden they say, you know what, we don't need the nursery ministry. We need you to do, you know, we need you to be on altar team. And you might not feel prepared. You might feel like, well, I'm just, I was prepared something else. I've prepared with kids songs, kids things and snacks and coloring books. I'm not prepared to be praying for people constantly at the altar. And that's the way it is sometimes in life. We prepare for one thing. We prepare for a certain journey. You prepared for a trip, a certain place, and then maybe it snowed and you had, maybe it snowed and you had, um, some guy almost ran me over. <laughs> um, you prepared for one thing only to realize that that's not 
uh, what you're going to do. Like I said, when I was preparing, going to Bible school and doing things, in my mind, I never thought I was preparing that we're going to pastor a church. I was going to Bible school because I wanted to be a youth leader. I wanted to help in the church, but not in the, necessarily in the platform of being a pastor. And I remember um, at one point, you know, I had never spoken in tongues. And I was, you know, dealing with that. I had been asking God for years and I never had been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And so finally one day I was praying for another woman with my senior pastor. And I was laying at her, I was at her feet praying. And all of a sudden, I felt the power of the Holy Ghost. I felt the fire of the Holy Ghost come over my head, from my head to my toes. And when I heard myself, I wasn't speaking English anymore. I was speaking in tongues, which is a, a language from God. Just like if you're Mexican, you might speak Spanish. Not all people do that. Same thing with people that are Christian. Not all of us might speak tongues, but it's they're there. But sometimes we just have the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And so I started speaking in tongues. I was praying for her. And it only lasted like, to be honest, like 10 or 15 seconds. It was just a brief second. A couple weeks later, we had someone come over, and um, I think it was Donnie Swagger. We had a service come out, a service at church, and you know he really prays for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when he was there, he was praying. You know, he said, "If you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, he goes, I want you to come over here so you can speak in tongues." And he said, "So technically, I couldn't go back up. I couldn't go to altar call to be prayed to speak in tongues because it had happened once two weeks ago, two weeks prior, for like 15 seconds." And he said, and everyone, and I was an altar worker anyway, so I regular, we prayed for you at the altar, people that want to pray. He said, and anyone that has spoken in tongues, and he goes, I want you to come up and pray for these people in tongues. Okay, so I was kind of having a little panic attack because I was prepared to pray for people. I was prepared, you know, I had gotten into God's presence, I had prepared, you know, in my spiritual life to pray for people, lay hands on people. I was not prepared to have to pray for somebody in tongues because I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to turn it on and off and just say, I'm going to talk in tongues. And so I went up to the altar and I said, Lord, in my mind, I'm having a panic attack. And I'm kind of just feeling like this is chaotic. I'm like, Lord, what am I to do? This man wants me to pray for this person in front of me, which is a young lady. And I was like, and I've never, I've never spoken in tongues for more than 15 seconds. God, how am I going to do this whole prayer for her in tongues? And I can imagine that that's how kind of God's people found Israel when they were prepared, you know, to go to war. And yet here they weren't prepared for Goliath. They weren't prepared for this, you know, this big old huge giant demon looking man that, you know, was huge and it was threatening them. So it's not the same thing. One's life or death. Another one is just, you know, me praying. But I thought it was chaotic. I felt fearful of, you know, not being able to do what I was being asked to do. And so I get up to another young lady and I pick up my hands and her hands are, you know, her hands are up, her eyes are closed. And I said, Lord, please honor your servant. Please honor me and let me pray for her in tongues. Okay, guys, the minute I opened my mouth and I started praying, all that would come out of my mouth was tongues. All I would be speaking is a different language consistently. Praying for I prayed for her the whole prayer. After I was done praying with her, I was so filled with the Holy Ghost, so filled with God's power that I could not stop speaking in tongues. I was just speaking and speaking in tongues. It went on for a while after church. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I just wanted to be praying that I couldn't talk and they would talk to me and all I would say was in tongues and so I don't know what you're going through if you feel you got prepared you're somewhere that's chaotic like David thought was he was in a chaotic situation so then he you know rumors get to Saul of what David is saying and Saul is real interested to see this man and to know what you know to know that he's ready to go fight Goliath because no one had been wanting to do it to the point where Saul had put a challenge out there and a reward that he was going to give up. He was so desperate that he was going to give up his daughter for the man that killed Goliath. And so he put up this reward and this bounty. It sounds like amazing. It's like millions of billions of dollars they're going to give away if, you know, somebody goes and does this. And nobody wanted it, no matter how great the reward was. Then David said, you know what? I'm not scared. You know, I, God's used me in, in great things. I'm not scared. I've killed lions. I've killed bears. And this reward sounds great too, so let me just do it. So then we see that Saul, in 1738, Saul says, Then Saul um, offered David his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. So Saul finally, he wasn't convinced at first. And he told David, the verse prior, you're too young, you're small, you know, how are you going to defeat this great man? And he was fearful for David's life. 
But seeing that David said, you know, it doesn't matter. I've killed, you know, lions and bears. David's not backing down from the challenge. Saul's not talking him out of it. Saul's like, what choice do I have? And he looks at David and he says, he's not prepared. He's not prepared to meet this challenge. And so many times it happens like that in our life. When you finally decide you're going to do something, you got prepared and it was for the wrong thing, then God decided to use you for something else. Like I said, we went to ministry. We didn't think we were going to be pastors. And that's where God ended up calling us to be. People around you will think you're not prepared. But they don't realize that the one that prepared you is not yourself. It's God. If God has called you to a journey in your life, he's going to prepare you and he's going to equip you to do it. And so I saw, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Joanne. I understand running on fumes. <laughs> and so as David finally decides he's going to do it, he talks Saul into to it. You know, he, he puts on this armor. And if you read the next couple of verses, it, it says he felt so uncomfortable. And it kind of puts into, you know, perspective. Sometimes I've had people come to my house and they didn't bring swimming clothes. And I'll lend them something. And, you know, I'm a big girl, so if I give someone that's super small, either my shorts or a t-shirt, it might be really big. I might have to end up giving my sense. Have you ever put something on in your life and they just felt like it wasn't the right size? You didn't feel good in? You just felt like, or it's happened to me when I've gone to my mom's. Oh my gosh, ladies. Okay, so my mom's lost a lot of weight. And uh, at one point, maybe we could wear the same clothes and it, maybe her clothes would just be a little bit, you know, snug on me. I remember <laughs> not too long ago, I went to her house one day after church and I was just like, mom, I'm so uncomfortable in what I'm wearing. And she goes, oh, I have something you can wear. Hand me something. And I was like, I started laughing. I was like, are you joking? Do I look like I'm like your size? There's no way that's going to fit me. She's like, put it on. But oh my gosh. Okay. It was just like tires for days. I was, I couldn't fit her clothes. It was so tight. And I was like, this is, yes, it's spandex, mom, but I'm not wearing this. So then she found a dress and it was like, I guess, dresses she bought more for like a nightgown. And it was like extra large. And I was like, okay, that fits me. That's my size, right? But so you can imagine poor David putting on this armor and just feeling like it was way too big. It was way too heavy. He felt so uncomfortable in it. And there's times as we got prepared, realized that God put us on detour and you're on your way somewhere else, that you're going to have to change, you know, what you got. You're going to get prepared again. And sometimes we have to get prepared in a couple of seconds and it's not for what we expected or what we thought. So as we see that David's getting prepared again, he put the armor on, didn't fit, tells Saul, I'm not comfortable in it. And Saul says, well, then what are we going to do? What are we going to give you? Because it's not like there's a Walmart around the corner and I can't go over there and buy you a suit. I can't go buy you a bulletproof vest. And that's how it is sometimes with us. You might be somewhere, you might have gone somewhere and you might've gone to a church and all of a sudden the sister says, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful you're here because we need you to do whatever. We need you to greet people. And you're like, I didn't comb my hair today or I didn't do whatever it is, you know, because it's happened to me. You're doing something that it might not even be a physical aspect. It might just be like, I've had a really bad morning. I've had a super hard morning. Like yesterday, my morning was tough with my boys both doing things and not me not being able to be there. But then what the Bible says, we have to be ready in all seasons and it's hard sometimes. So we see that David did something. He did something that was kind of a little, kind of a little peculiar, a little awkward and he didn't run to the store. He didn't run to the next soldier. And that's what we usually do. If, you know, if you're going through something, I don't know about you, but a lot of times we run to our friend. We run to our neighbor and say, hey, I don't have such and such. Can you lend me this? I remember beauty school, we were doing things and maybe you forgot something at home. Hey, can you lend me your, you know, I forgot a certain um, comb. Can you lend it to me? Or if I need an extra clip, can you lend to me? David didn't do that. If you look at the whole time, in the beginning when Saul is trying to arm him, Saul is trying to prepare him for this battle. Sometimes people will try to prepare us because they're trying to do God's work in our life. They're trying to tell you what you need to put on for the mission that God's called you when they have no idea how God's going to use you. And I've had it happen to me and I've also tried to do it to other people. And I don't know about you, if you try to do it to your kids, you try to do it and tell, oh sister, you need to really do this. You need to do that. Really, we can suggest things, but ultimately we don't know what God has planned for that person or even planned for us. So we need to really trust and lean on God that he would prepare and equip us because we are just human beings and we only see so far. God knows what's around the corner. So as this was going on and he took off the armor, David was left that he was not armed. What was he going to do? He didn't even have, he didn't have a sword. He didn't have a shield. He didn't have all those things that a normal soldier would have. And um, so it says um, in First of Samuel 17, 40, it talks about how David picked up after going and realizing that the 
the arm wasn't going to fit him, that he felt uncomfortable. He was like, I'm not going to be able to kill nobody or nothing in this armor. I need to get prepared. So he takes out, he goes down, he finds five smooth stones, and he has a slingshot, and that's what he uses to kill Goliath. And if you read the story, you know, he got five smooth stones. The first stone he put on, he killed Goliath. And then it talks about how he went, and he had told Goliath when Goliath was, you know, yelling at him, you know, who are you that they're sending a dog, you know, to come after me. And going on yelling all these ridiculous things because he was he was angry that he felt like I can't believe they're sending this little boy to come and fight me. Where are the men? And um, David being upset, he's like, it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter because God's the one going to get the victory. When you're in the middle of your life, you're in the middle of being prepared for the ministry or the calling God's given you. When you're in the middle and you're not prepared, first of all, do not be fearful. Do not listen to the chaos around you. Had David listened to the chaos, he probably would have gotten home. His brother basically told him, go home, and he was angry at him. There will be people in your life to tell you, you cannot do this. This challenge is way too big for you. You're just a small person from a small town. You know, who do you think you are? But God is big, and God is powerful, and he's made you to do incredible things. And, you know, sometimes the most incredible things we can do are in our home. When you're thinking, like, well, I don't have these big goals. I don't have these big dreams. I just want to be a good mom. That's a great goal to have. Because those children, God has given them to you. Whether they live at home with you or they don't, whether they're adults or children. What if your goal is to, I really want to pursue a, a, you know, a degree. I really want to go back to school. Whatever it is you want to do, it is possible. But sometimes, and it's happened to me, as I've prepared, and I went to beauty school. And I'm being honest, I went to beauty school with the expectation that I didn't really want to do it. It was more like I enjoyed makeup somewhat. And, uh, but I, I was like, okay, I'll do this. And as I went to beauty school... It wasn't something I really pursued afterwards. Like I worked and I worked with different makeup lines. I went to salon and I, and I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. But I've known for the longest time because God had to tell me prophetically that he had called us into ministry. That that's what he's called. And that's where I feel fulfillment in. But so many times have we prepared ourselves for things that God hasn't called us to do. And then we can get upset. So instead of me being upset saying, I'm not in the salon. I'm not doing this. What did I do that for? I am okay with that. That's where God put me for that season to minister to certain people, to bless people's lives to be in the middle where I was at. There's going to be times you're going to prepare for things and you think in your mind, that's absolutely where I need to be. And then like you find out like David, that it's completely chaos and it's completely different than what you thought. And then you can choose. Are you going to let fear creep in and take your blessing? Are you going to be upset and just have a meltdown? And it's not bad if you do, because we all have them. But it's not staying there. That's, that's the thing. We can't stay there. We can't stay in the meltdown. We can't stay paralyzed to not take a step out in faith. God is preparing you for something. So many times we feel we're preparing ourselves. And then God says, yes, that was part of the journey. Part of the journey was you learning that no matter how, much, how prepared you feel, you will be unprepared. You will be not equipped enough because you, there's a different journey that I'm sending you on. And we need to be open to that. We need to not be paralyzed. We need to be open to that. God might change your destination. He might change your degree. He might change your goals, your ministry, maybe the person you're marrying. You're thinking for sure this is the person that, you know, God's called into my life. And then only to find out weeks before, and I've heard it from friends and people, only to find out weeks before, you know, that they were cheating or something was going on. And it, that, you know, that relationship was destroyed. And that person's like having a meltdown. Why? Why God? And God's like, because I've seen that person's heart. His heart wasn't good. He didn't truly love you. And so then you're like, okay, well, then what do you have now? What do I do now? You trust God. We need to learn to trust God. We need to walk by faith, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're feeling right now, no matter if you're having an emotional, stressful day like I did yesterday, thinking of, I wasn't there. You're thinking, you're not meeting the mark as a mom, as a wife. You feel like a failure. You feel like you failed your children. You know, maybe your children are, are grown up, gone from home, and you know that they're living a hard life. They're going through physical abuse, emotional abuse, emotional stress, financial stress. And you're thinking, what did I do wrong? Why did I miss the mark so bad? It's not that you missed the mark. It's there's something God is preparing your child for. And God is dealing with them, their hearts, to get them where he needs them to be. He doesn't want their soul to be lost. So when we're in that situation, and then we have to pick up the stones. David picked up five smooth stones. Sometimes when you have to change directions, you have to get prepared again. Because what you thought you were going to do is not what you're going to do. So you might be, you know, asked to go somewhere and you're thinking you're just going as a guest. And then all of a sudden they put you to work. Or they might want you to do certain special thing in the service in church. 
or in wherever you're going. And you're like, I wasn't prepared for this. But God will equip you. So what did David do? He picked up the five smooth stones, picked them up off the ground, put them in a slingshot, defeated Goliath. And then to top it off, David said something peculiar. He got Goliath's sword out and he used Goliath's sword to take off his head. Sometimes what the enemy intends for bad, and the Bible says that what the enemy intends for bad, God uses it for good. Goliath meant that sword to kill David, to kill any of the Israelites that went before him. God used his own weapon against him. And that's what we need to realize, that when you're in the midst of something, a journey, you know, onto your, your promised land, and it's not a journey, you know, that you thought you were going to take, or maybe all of a sudden you have an obstacle in the way, and you have a detour, you have to go around somewhere because God's like, you know what, you haven't learned to be humble yet. You're so proud. I need you to be humble and realize that your strength comes from me and not your own abilities. Then all of a sudden you're in the middle, you're in the front of a Goliath, you're facing Goliath in your life. And you're like, what do I do? You pick up the stones, you pick up your faith, you walk by faith. David knew that the victory wasn't his. He didn't have the audacity or the arrogance to say, oh, I'm going to beat him up because I'm so strong. He did, he did tell him, you know, I've killed lions, I've killed bears. But yes, but he knew ultimately that the Lord is the one that had helped him to do those things. You need to realize that wherever God, wherever you're at right now, if you're hitting a stone wall and you're like, I just can't get over this. I'm a plateau with it. I can't lose weight. Or I'm hitting that plateau that, you know, my marriage doesn't change. Things are just bad. Things are just terrible. And I've prepared and I've prepared and I've been persistent like the sister says. I've been praying. I've been doing these things. And all in the middle, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of something and you're like feeling like it's all falling apart. And it gets hard. Don't give up because God has not left you alone. He has not abandoned you. So if you're there, pick up your faith where you're at. Pick up your faith and just say, Lord, I'm going to walk by faith. Because the Bible says it is impossible for man to please God without faith. You can't please God without faith. You can't say you're a daughter of God and then just not have faith at all. And keep, and keep still and say, I'm not going to do nothing. Be paralyzed. That's what the enemy wants you to do. The enemy wants you to be paralyzed. The enemy worked so hard to paralyze David since you get there, since the beginning. When he's figuring out that they're in battle, that they're in war, and all these tragedies are going on. He worked so hard to have his brother tell him over and over, who do you think you are? You're the youngest. You're not quite good enough. You're, you know, whatever it is, you're arrogant. All these things that they told him, people will tell you. The enemy will tell you daily, you're not good enough. You're not enough. And as you look at those things and you realize it's because he fears what you're going to do. He fears if you can stay persistent, if you can stay the course, if you can keep on praying that your husband will be saved. He fears your children will change. He fears that you will walk in unity with God and you will let God lead you instead of you trying to lead God. And as you do those things, as you try to seek God, as you're persistent, you're going to realize how things are going to change, how things are going to get better. But it takes you picking up those stones, which is your faith, picking up the courage you need to face off in battle because we are in a battle consistently for our lives. We're in a battle to win our souls. We're in a battle for our children's lives. As I went to bed last night and my child so far, well, he's not even that far, but not at home under my roof. What is my, my work cry, Lord, please protect my child. I declare the blood of Jesus for him. I declare no weapon formed against him shall prosper, Lord. He is blessed and highly favored. Now I'm blessing and blessing my child, praying protection over him. We are in a constant war. Had my child been at home, maybe I wouldn't be praying for him as much. And God wants me to remember to pray for my child. And there's something God wants to teach me in this moment of me feeling like that he's, you know, far. There's something we need to learn in the season. When you're in the season, you know, it's the greatest lesson we learn is not when we walk through the door, when God opens the door, it's in the hallway, in those seasons of waiting. As you're preparing to go into this war that you weren't expecting, going on this journey that you weren't expecting because you were prepared to go to the store, you were prepared, like I said, to do nursery ministry, and all of a sudden they told you you're going to be on the cleaning ministry, and you're like, I don't want to clean. I don't want to do this. That's not something I want to do. Why would I want to clean? Whatever you're preparing for, you're prepared for one degree. Realize when you get there that you hate it. You hate it math, and you, want, you don't want to be an accountant anymore because it's not what you thought you wanted to be. As you, and God changes your route. He reroutes you. You know, like GPS said, we go to a place, and maybe we pass the street, and he has to reroute us again. Sometimes in our lives, we're driving on a destination where we're thinking we're going to go. We're thinking that God wants us to go there. And all of a sudden, we get somewhere, and we little, went a little past it because that, that, that street didn't look quite right. And the whole GPS will reroute you. A lot of times, God has to reroute our path because we are on a path 
to destruction. We are on a path that seems good. Everything seems amazing, but it's not going to be a path that edifies our home, edifies our children, edifies our life. So today, as we feel that we're not prepared, number one, trust God. Trust God in it and whatever you're going through. In the midst of the darkness, in the midst that you can't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, trust God. Don't let fear paralyze you. Don't let what the enemy has told you paralyze you because he is concerned about you failing. His only objective is for you to fail. His only desire is for you to fail. That is all he's concerned. It says he came to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill you spiritually. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to steal your blessing. He wants to steal your salvation. He wants to steal God's dream for your life, God's purpose for your life, because a lot of times we hand it to him. So as we're thinking about this week about preparing, and I know one of the hardest things in life, and this is honestly, I think really hard, is unmet expectations. And we, I've talked about it before. When you're planning a trip and planning to go somewhere, you're planning something in your life, like I said, a, a health weight loss. You know, you planned, you, maybe you did the meal prepping for the whole week to only have a family emergency happen. And then you're not home and you're out and about and you don't have any of the meals you planned for yourself. We have to get focused again, get Christ-centered, get focused and say, Lord, I don't know why you rerouted me. I don't know why you took me this way. I prepared so hard with the other way that I was going to do. I prepared so hard with my eating habits. And now I'm in my daughter's house all week. And now I'm in my son's. Or now I'm in this situation. And I don't know what you want from me. Just get prepared that if God has rerouted you, it's for a good reason. And while he's rerouting you, he will equip you. And you might feel like there's nothing around you. There's nobody, nothing, you know, for nobody to lend you, to help you with the journey. Maybe you went to your daughter's house and then... You don't have the right tennis shoes. You wanted to go for a walk and you're like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? Well, maybe God just wants you to stretch in your living room. Maybe he wants you to do some have work in your living room. But you need to be comfortable and okay that we are not in control of our lives. There is a God in heaven that has a divine purpose for our lives, that has a divine calling for you, that has great plans. And as you prepare for things in life, look at, we look at the nature behind me. So many times do we prepare for things and we end up in different places that are that are more beautiful than if we would have just continued the route we were on. There is something that God wants to do in your life, something that God wants to bless you in. So be prepared for your blessings. Be prepared to be rerouted. Be prepared to feel not equipped, that you don't have the right equipment, not to feel that you know you don't have what you need. But it's okay because God will supply all your needs. Everything you need, He'll supply it. He'll supply your peace that you need if you're lacking peace today. If you're lacking his joy, if you're lacking, you know, love, whatever you feel, if you feel lonely and you just feel like, I thought I would be married by now and I'm a lot older and I'm not married or my marriage failed, whatever it is, trust God, lean on him because there's something he wants to give you. There's something he wants to do. Maybe he's made you wait longer for that certain special person because maybe five years ago when you were planning to get married, you weren't ready and it would have just ended up in divorce. But so many times are we upset because we make plans that we feel prepared for certain things and God really knows we're not. We might be prepared physically. You pack the luggage and you have everything ready to go and you're just not prepared. Whatever it is that you feel that you're not prepared enough of, that it's just too much, that it's too hard, go to God. Go to God this morning. David had to go to God as he was trying to be equipped by somebody else. Don't let somebody else do God's work in your life. Yes, listen to wise counsel. And if someone's telling you not to cross the street while the cars are going, don't do it. Someone's telling you, you know, certain things that, you know, not to be bulimic, not to be throwing that, but, you know, because you want to be, lose weight. Listen to wise counsel. But if someone's trying to equip you something, like maybe they're trying to force you into a ministry that you feel like you're not equipped to do, or, you know, they're trying to force you in something you feel like it's not from God, take a time and pray about it and pray and ask God. Because David had to realize when Saul was equipping him with his armor, which is a king's armor, so it must have been great armor, but it wasn't comfortable for him. He took it off and he defeated Goliath with simple things. We will defeat the enemy with our faith. Something that you know you cannot buy, someone I cannot give you, I cannot give you faith, you cannot give me faith. It is something you have to grab on your own and you have to take it by forcing yourself to say, I will believe. I, be I will believe that I can do all things to Christ to train me. I will believe that with him, nothing is impossible. What's impossible to man, to God is not impossible. As you believe those things, you walk into greatness. You walk in boldness, knowing that even though you go before the giant, even though he, he laughs and mocks you, 
even though you go apply for a job and other people say you're not qualified for it you're not good enough and God says that's what I'm going to give you God will give you victory God will open doors for you God will bless you but it is a choice whether you believe or not it is a choice whether we walk by faith or not God isn't looking for Thomas is to poke you know the wounds on his arm saying okay I want to see it he's looking for people that says I will believe even though I do not see it I will believe that I am made for greater things than this I will believe that I am the head and not the tail I will believe that God has predestined me for greatness so whatever you're going through right now whatever you feel in your life if you feel it's just too much you feel I'm not enough I'm just not enough I cannot do this I prepared for another journey. I prepared, I prepared for my first marriage. It failed. Now I'm in the second one. I don't know what to do. Whatever you're dealing with today, realize you are equipped by God. God has made you. And there's certain things in your DNA. There's certain things that make you so special that nobody else has. And if he's put you in front of that giant, it's because he's giving you the power authority in his name to slay it. You're going to slay that giant. You're going to take its head off and you're going to walk victorious and you're going to hold it up for the enemy to see and for the enemy to run because you are a child. You are a daughter of the Most High and you are not on your own. He is with you. The victory is the Lord. The victory in your life is the Lord's. And sometimes we try to take credit for God's victory. Well, I found a good spouse. It's not that you found him. God put him there for you. You were just obedient. You are to be obedient in God. You are to trust him that in the midst of the circumstance, in the midst of the chaos, he would not leave you nor forsake you. He is not going to abandon you. He's not left you. And I want you to know that no matter what you're going through today, no matter how defeated you might feel. Yesterday I felt defeated as a mom because I had said I didn't want to have a secular job or another job because I wanted to be there for my kids. And yet here I am, took a job, and then I was saying, like, why did I do this? I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know if you're having dealing with a hard time of whatever it is you felt, you know, you weren't prepared to deal with that. We need to line up our lives with God. And as we do that, there's things we're going to learn. Like we said, there's more lessons that we learn in the hallway than when the door opens. You learn to be patient. You learn to trust in God. You learn to lean on His understanding, not your own. And as we're learning this, sisters, be encouraged today. Be encouraged whatever you're going through. If you're dealing with it, I mean, I have high blood pressure. If you're dealing with sickness and disease and you're like, it's not an option to lose weight. I have to lose weight for my knees, for my joints, whatever it is you're going through. Recognize and realize you're not alone. There is a God in heaven that is not only in heaven that is with you if you open your heart to Jesus. And you say, how can I open my heart? It's a, it's a confession of faith saying that you allow him to your heart and accept him as your Lord and Savior. If you do that and you open to his will, you will see greater things in your life come to pass than you ever expected. But you need to decide, what is it I want? Do I want to be paralyzed with fear? Do I want to stay like the Israelites were? Just looking around saying, who's going to solve my problems? What man is God going to send to solve my problems? A lot of times God might not send you a man yet, because you're trusting that a man's going to come to sweep you off your feet to fix your life. And God's like, uh-uh, I'm the only one that can fix your life. I'm the only one that can change the situation. So if you're not where you need to be, because most of the time we're not, we always need work. Trust on God this morning. We're going to pray that God help us to get prepared in those moments that we're not prepared and we're dealing with not being prepared to trust in Him, to call on Him, to lean on Him, and realize that He is in control, that He is amazing, all loving and powerful. Amen? So we're going to um, pray, and I, I invite you to pray with me. And I just, I'm, I took a step, and I'm sitting down right here. I want you guys to see how beautiful things are behind me. And sometimes things might look chaotic to somebody else. And when this park had no park on it, it probably looked like chaos and just dirt or whatever was in it feels. And then someone seeing a vision and seeing what the beauty of it could be. That's how God is. Sometimes God is rerouting us because he sees a beauty that is in you. He sees the beauty that he's created you to have and he wants you to see it and he has to develop it, and he has to dig into our hearts to prepare us to do what he's called us father god we thank you god this morning god we worship you god for everything you've created god for being creator of heaven and earth father god we worship you for your kindness for your joy for your beauty lord we worship you father god because even though we don't understand god what you're doing or why you're doing it god we worship you lord because you are good and you are god lord we ask you, God, this morning, God, that you would forgive us, God, for everything we're doing, knowing and not knowing, God, that you would forgive us, God, for those times and need, God, that we have, that we felt that we're ill-equipped, God, ill-prepared, God, that we felt that we just can't do it, God. We ask your forgiveness, God, for doubting you sometimes, Lord, 
for coming to your presence, Father God, and saying, you know, God, I wish you made me like somebody else, God. Why couldn't my life be like hers? God, forgive us, Lord, for not being content, God. Forgive us for being complainers, Father God. Forgive us for not trusting you, Lord, and what you called us to do, God. And we ask you, Jesus, this morning be a morning of victory, Father God. That this morning be a morning of greatness, God. That we would slay the giants that are before us, Father God. That as you prepare us, God, for this journey of life ahead of us, God, for the ministry, for the marriage that you called us to be, for everything you're putting in our lives, for to be better mothers, better wives, better women, God, that would empower other people to seek you. That you would help us, God, to trust you, God, to lean on your understanding, not our own, Father God, to walk by faith and not by sight, Father God, to walk in your presence. God, help us, God. We need you, Jesus. We need you, God. Like this trees, God, need the water, God. Like the trees need the sun, God. We need you to be the sun of our lives, God, to shine upon us, Father God, to give us the nutrients we need, God, to get prepared for the calling you called us, Lord. As we're on that journey, God, constantly being rerouted, God, because we try to take detours from where you called us, God. Help us, Lord. Help us to be obedient, God. Help us to be prepared, God, in what you've called us to do. Help us to love you and worship you, Jesus. We need you. My sisters need you. They need a miracle. They need miracle signs and wonders in their lives, Father God. I pray for provision, God. Whatever they need, God. If they need finances, God, I would pray for their finances, God. I pray for their strength physically and their body, God, as we continue this journey of getting healthier, God. As we continue this journey of getting healthier physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, Lord. That our lives would be transformed and changed, Father God. That we would lean on you and on our own understanding, Father God. I pray for my sisters right now. Whatever they're going through, God, in their heart. Whatever discouragement has set in, Lord. That you be with them, God that you would bless them, that you would guide them, Lord. Then this journey of life, Father God, you be with them. Lord, whatever they're going through right now, all discouragement, you have to go in the name of Jesus, I bind you. All sadness, heartbreak, all condemnation that's been there against them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, Father God. I ask you that we be spirit-led, God, and that you would guide us, Father God. That you would help us to worship you. That you would help us to exalt you and praise you, God. That we could stand in the gap for our family and make the difference, God. Help us to be light, God, in the darkness. Help us to be salt to this world, God. Help us to be the difference we want to see, Father God. And press on our hearts, God, the desire to pray, the desire to seek you, the desire to worship you, God. Teach us how to be intercessors, Father God, in spirit, God. Help us to warfare for our family, God. Help us to glorify your name, God. We bless the areas of our life, God. We bless our homes, God. We bless the door, God, the coming and going. We bless every area of our home, our lives, Lord, and our families, God. We declare that we are more than victorious in Jesus Christ, Lord, that we are more than conquerors, God, that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above and not beneath, Father God. We declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Father God. We are armed and dangerous, God. We are women who are armed, God, because we are prepared and going to warfare, knowing that we're not going on our own battle. We're not going in our own armor, God. We're going in your armor, Father God. We're going by faith, God. We're walking in faith, God, trusting you that as we're walking, God, this daily journey, God, that you are with us, God. I bless my sisters and everything, that everybody that's watching, God, this morning, that whatever they're going through in their lives, whatever they're feeling, God, loneliness, heartbreak, so many things that we feel, God, in our daily lives because of things that happen to us and things that we do ourselves, God, that you would guide us and lead us, Holy Spirit, that we'd be pressed with your presence and we'd be filled with you, God. I ask you, God, to bless everyone to be with us in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, guide us right now in your mighty name. I ask you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you'd be with us. We thank you, Father God. I bless everyone, Father God, in your mighty name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sisters, well, thank you for watching. Like I said, this is Daisy with Daisy Made Up. And um, amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. And I, like I said before, the subscribe button below the little notification bell, but the notification bell is what gives you the notifications. So when you sign into YouTube, it's what tells you who that you subscribe to is on live. So turn that on because I know I keep on hearing, my mom keeps on asking me how to do that. It's a notification bell above. And so if you haven't um, subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. If you've been encouraged, encourage somebody else, trust in God, whatever they're going through. It's a lot of times when we deal with, encourage somebody else. Whatever you need in your life, give to somebody else. If you need finances, sow into somebody else's life. If you need encouragement, give someone else encouragement. Amen? And again, go ahead and share this video and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. God bless you and have a great day.